And for the first time in the Atlantic hurricane season of 2025, we have a tropical wave that's actually made it off Africa and has made it in the Caribbean. And remember, it was two weeks ago, I said, this is the one to watch. Because I, I had a feeling based on the weather pattern that this wave would find its way into the Caribbean, and it certainly has here. Here it is this morning, pretty robust area of showers and thunderstorms. I remember last week we were concerned that the wave could be way down here, and if it would interact with the South American coast, that was what we were hoping for, that it would just dissipate. It didn't. It's a little farther north. So the first hurdle to get to the United States has been cleared with this way, but there are many more hurdles on the way, thankfully, but we're going to have to watch this. Well, here it is right now. Now, still no center of circulation with this, so this is not even a tropical depression. It is a tropical wave. You could see on the satellite, you've got a boundary in here. You see that? There's some wind shear on the northern side of this system. I'll show you that in a second. The concern I've always had, though, is that with this system, it'll be coming into the Caribbean, and there's just no inch. There's just this warm water. These are the anomalies. So water temperatures are typically 83, 84, but you're looking at this whole area where these temperature anomalies are 3 to 4 degrees above historical average. So that puts these temperatures in the middle to upper 80s. I mean, that is exceptionally warm water and when you have this warm water you can overcome the other challenges of dry air and wind shear now i'm not worried about dry air there's no dry air into this system but we do have to keep an eye on the wind shear and right now as i mentioned there is wind shear where the system is located here it is you see the wind shear on the northern side and you still have pockets of wind shear in here so right now the wind shear is the limiting factor. And of course, the other limiting factor is that this system is unorganized. Now, I want to give you a talking point here. Here are the scenarios for this system. Wednesday is the fork in the road. As this continues to move to the west, we always had a fork in the road. Made this this morning. All right, here's the key. Here is the key. If this system organizes quickly and strengthens, it will likely it will likely get drawn north away from the United States. Good news for the United States. This could be catastrophic news, though, for Hispaniola, because if it strengthens, there's some indication that it could slow over the islands, producing heavy amounts of rain. And don't forget, you have a lot of mountainous terrain here. And if that happens, that would be catastrophic. There's also a scenario, though, that the organization is slow, very slow. And if it is slow, then it continues on its way to the west, and then early next week, we're going to have to deal with this. So those are the scenarios right now. Which is correct? That's always a million-dollar question. Well, I think if you look at the wind shear, you get an idea of what may happen. I want to show you this uh, wind shear map right now. What, what I'm going to do is the path of this system is going to be in here. Now, this is the wind shear on Tuesday. You see the darker colors. That's the wind shear. You got strong wind shear here from the Gulf into the tropical Atlantic. There is some westerly wind shear here. There's no question about it in here. So as this tracks in this area tomorrow, it still looks like it's wind shear. What about Wednesday? Let's go forward into Wednesday. Here it is. Now, it starts to lessen a little bit. Now, the European, the American models, that other scenario starts pulling it northward. If that's the case, there is some wind shear here, but what concerns me is if this system does stay weak, you'll notice what happens in this part of the basin as we get into the latter half of this week. Let's say it continues on its merry way. Here's Thursday, here's Friday. You start seeing lesser colors here in the Southwest Caribbean. And then by this weekend, assuming it does not pull northward, look what happens for the wind shear. It's even lesser. See, in here, you have less wind shear in here. So if this remains weak and then gets into the Southwest Atlantic, if it doesn't fork, if it doesn't go into a storm Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it stays weak and it continues on that west track, I think it will become a hurricane then as we head toward the weekend. So the question is, the two scenarios, let me show you the modeling on this. 
and um, I'll show you what we're looking at. It's the American model that has been very consistent with this system, showing it becoming a storm. Let me show it to you right now. Um, so this is the American model. Let's go through it. Look at the red. You're going to focus in on, you're going to focus in, uh, sorry, it's trying to get my pen here. You're going to focus in on this area in here. Watch the American model go with it. North. See that? There it is. This would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. European model, a little different. You see where it is? Stays weak, stays weak, never develops. Here we are on Thursday. There we are on Friday. There we are on Saturday. Here it goes in the Sunday, in the Monday, and then it's sitting here. This is the scenario that would have some potential for a U.S. landfall. It's a potential. I still think it's a lower probability, but it's a potential. So let's say it continues on its merry way. Does it have a shock coming into the United States? I think it does, but it's less likely. Here's what will determine this. It'll be as we get into this weekend, look at this trough. Here's the storm down here. Look at this trough coming in. See that? Now, this determines the track. Now, right now, this says the trough is too strong, and it goes out to sea. I think that is the most likely scenario. But as we've been talking about, if this would impact the United States, and it's a big F, it's a big F, it would be this trough's a little slower, it's a little back in here, and it would guide toward Cuba, East uh, Florida, and up the East Coast. It is a less likely scenario, but it's a scenario nonetheless, and it will all determine, does this stay weak and get in the Southwest Caribbean? And let's see what that trough does. Stay with us.